it, there's no there's no real point really like it doesn't really help and it's just a waste of time and i found that for me when i was a newbie trainer i felt like i had to go through those assessments because it was a way that i was justifying my expertise right and that's bullcrap like it's not true that doesn't automatically qualify you as a better trainer or a worse trainer or anything it just basically speaks to our own insecurity that you have this this need to show that you know what you're doing. It's like, just let it go. It's fine. You do know what you're doing. Just take yeah. them through the process that's going to benefit them, right? This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. It's Tuesday. It's, it's Thursday, I think. Um, the story that I hate to hear the most is the smile story. That's so stupid. You know, yeah. why don't you put a smile on that pretty face? Oh, you're such a pretty girl. Why don't you? That's, that's the dumbest. Men, if you're listening, because I know that we're recording now, don't tell a woman to smile. It's just the dumbest. It's the stupidest thing that you can say to a woman that you don't know. Yeah, it's do just better. so fundamentally stupid. Yeah, do, do better. better. Do, do better. better. Do better. Do better. You know. Run your fingers through your hair like yeah. Run your fingers through your hair like Jonathan Goodman. Uh, that's that's his. That's the Jonathan <laughs> Goodman mating signal. He, I yeah, it's kind of short today. Yeah, it's kind it's kind of short, Jonathan. I just got I got a I had a I had a Calvin a Calvin daddy morning and we went and got haircuts. Oh, did you? Oh, that's awesome. So listen to what this kid did. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Listen to what this kid did this morning. So I'm, first off, what you guys need to know about me is that I'm a suck. Like, I am right. a suck for snuggling, for holding hands. Like, I'm just a sweetheart, you know? You're, you're and easy. So, <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan Goodman is easy, ladies and gentlemen. That's what he's saying. He's and easy. so Calvin, Calvin was never a snuggler, right? And it killed me. And so he now was old enough to know how to play the game. Okay. And mm. a part of me really, really likes this. A part of me um, really doesn't because he's just getting way too smart for his own good. So he basically <laughs> knows that he can manipulate me at any yes. point in time with with snuggling or holding hands. So we're at breakfast, right? I had already had breakfast um, at home and, and we went out to breakfast and he got waffles. And like, these waffles are pretty good, right? So I'm clearly going to take some of his waffles because like, why <laughs> else would you become a father if you can't eat your son's waffles? Like there's no 100%. Yeah. 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 We all eat our children's food here on this call. Yeah. Other than <laughs> and so, so he's like, Daddy, hold my hand. So I, you know, reach across the table at breakfast. I'm like, oh, he wants to hold my hand. Turns out, you guys all see where this is going. The kid was holding my hand down while he ate his waffles so that I didn't get to eat his waffles. Yeah. This is and awesome. It worked. It worked. Oh, oh man, I I love this kid, man. I can't I can't wait. I can't wait till I get to meet Calvin again. Cause I, I only you know, when I saw him he was just a he was a bundle of goodmen. Like he was just he was, he was just he was just a blur. Yeah. Yo, he was like a month and a half old when you first saw yeah, him. Yeah, he's like a blurb in a in a convention center. I was like, this what's, is a, what's this in that is bag? A, a, and he's like, Oh, it's a child. Uh, this is a warning <laughs> sign to all the fathers out there. Don't book a major conference. <laughs> A month after your first child is about to be born, um, your wife, crazy. your wife will not be happy with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that and that, yeah. that kid that kid was exposed too. Like there was there were some heavy breathers at that conference. Uh, you know, he, he got he got exposed to a lot of a lot multiple countries worth of bacteria uh, breathing over him that day because I right. I remember doing it myself. Yeah. Because John was holding him, and we were all, oh, look, he's so cute. And it's, there was, there was, he was exposed to a lot of uh, a lot of bacterial agents from several parts of the world. Can, can we talk about how much of a champ Carolina was at that at that event, though? I didn't, well, I didn't know her. That, what I didn't did I do? Her there. So uh, we, I, I, I had like a social. So this was I for anybody listening that doesn't know because I haven't done it for a few years. I'd put on a couple conferences in the past, and so I put on two conferences at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. And um, I had like a pre-party, basically networking hangout thing, and I rented out the Hockey Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. which oh yeah, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, so everybody came basically with the Hockey Hall of Fame to ourselves. The Stanley Cup was there. Everybody got to like hang out with the Stanley Cup, and it was like two days before this, the Pittsburgh Penguins won the Stanley Cup. So it was really really neat. Mm -hmm. 
Um, except for the Americans who don't understand what hockey we, is and just want to talk. We were not impressed. John. There yeah. was like there was like a group of Americans in the corner just talking yeah. about football. I was in literal. I was in that group. Hall of Fame. Yeah, and me and Casey so, Sasek uh, talking yeah. trash to you about how awful the Hockey Hall of Fame was. I'm sorry. Right. I didn't want to interest. Please continue. I think I think you actually used the words. Yo, this would be pretty sweet if it was the Football Hall of Fame, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what we said. <laughs> that was the context of our conversation. Yep. Man, this would be awesome with the NFL Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, Canada, so, whatever. So Carolina shows up to the event the night before. Oh. Talk, t- 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 yes. Tell the people, Carolina. <laughs> tell the people what's going on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I showed up to this, like, um, essentially like a, like a networking business professional adult engagement, social yes. engagement, where there yes. was drinking and just growing up with my six month old baby yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in my baby carrier. Cause I was like, she's breastfeeding. I can't leave her alone. Like Toronto is an hour away from where I live and I can't be that far away from her. She never took a bottle. So I was like, this kid is stuck on me and I'm, I'm trapped and I'm not going to miss out on that. So I guess they're all going to get to meet my baby. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what happened. I mean, this thing is brand new. Right? It is. It is not early. I mean, this is like, like that was it. The irresponsibility as a parent to bring your child, your six months child, out that late at night. Yep. That's, yeah, that's it was impressive. Your dedication. That's was what impressive. I remember. Well, if and let me tell you, this was not the only time. There was also a, a precision nutrition gathering that happened like that same summer. And same, I'm like, my kid depends on me entirely. I guess, kid, you're coming with me to the potluck dinner for PN. So we have a picture of like uh, John Brady, like JB is talking to me in this beautiful buffet line. We're surrounded by people who are like, just like staring at him adoringly because so many people love him. And I'm there with my baby, my baby carrier. And she's just like <laughs> trying to reach for the food or something. We have awesome pictures. So what I'm saying is moms in the industry, sometimes you're just going to do whatever you got to do to right. show up and get shit done. And that's okay. <laughs> get, it, get, it, get it done out there, ladies. Uh, yes. You know, that's, that's <laughs> I, I remember I remember you being there with the child, Keto, but I yes. don't I don't I don't I didn't have any interaction with you at all. Um, <laughs> but you were like, who's that uh, weirdo yeah. with a baby? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I just remember I was like, is that a, is that a baby? Um, hashtag no excuses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have, hashtag yeah. no excuse, mom. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Do you remember that nonsense from a few years ago? That no oh, excuse, yes. mom. The yes. that went around the Total internet. It's, bullshit. it's so yes. interesting to just watch the internet get really upset about a different thing every single week and then look back at it and be like, remember when the internet was mad about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who was True. that lady? Who who was it? I, I can't know. remember. She she was of she was of Asian descent, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, she was like either Filipino or something. I yeah. remember a very beautiful woman with her three yeah. ch- children, including this baby, and she had yeah. like abs, like the chiseled abs, abs and shit. And yeah. everybody's like, "How dare you? Yeah. How dare you show us?" People, anyway, people, yeah, people, what were people, people upset were about with that? Yeah, what were they, so what were they I think. About? So I think that there, what what happens in 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 the messaging is not so much that she's proud of herself because I don't think anybody was mad at her being proud of herself. What was the problem there was the whole like, what's your excuse? Right. Like right. that tag, that tag phrase is mm. so annoying for a bunch of reasons because it's like sometimes people don't have excuses; they have legitimate reasons why it is impossible to reach a level that you're kind of like now imposing <laughs> as a right. standard that shouldn't necessarily be. So anyway, I think that was where she where she struck a chord yeah. negatively with a lot of people. Because so yeah, what you're saying it's is annoying. that um, the hashtag no excuse mom shouldn't tell me that I shouldn't have excuses and that you should do better, <laughs> do better, <laughs> do better, do better. I'll yeah. tell you what, part of the reason was people like pizza. Like some people just don't freaking <laughs> care. Like, you know, there's there's. There, you know, there's a very fine line between the dedication and insanity of someone who wants to constantly have a chiseled six pack. Because uh, mm. it doesn't really, unless you're, and and I and I hope I hope this upsets people when they hear it uh, because I, <laughs> because I just don't care. <laughs> I just don't care that you're upset by it. You know, but there's if if I could channel a little Jonathan Goodman's energy here, I just don't care that you don't like what I'm about to say. Uh, but but you know. <laughs> A six pack doesn't really do anything for you 
Um, yeah. Unless you are a legit fitness model, you know, and you earn right. income mm-hmm. that way. But other than that, like you don't go through the checkout line at the supermarket and they're like, hey, can we check for a six pack? You might get a 20% discount. Like it, <laughs> all, all it I does is. I have a really you. funny story about oh my God. somebody. I'm not going to say who it is. I'll tell you guys afterwards. I'm not going to say it on the air because I'd have to get his permission to say it. Um, but he's, he's very, very well known in our industry. Um, really? uh-huh. and, uh, and he's been a friend for a lot of years and I, I've gotten to know him really well over the years, uh, cause he, uh, cause I've spent a lot of time where he lives. And so the, does, does his last name Ron was Shudman? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. um, no, it doesn't. And so okay, he was, he it. was telling me that he, uh, basically he cheated on his fiance fiance oh, i no. hate how you can't say that word without saying it like a crescendo fiance <laughs> uh, so he he cheated on his fiance and um oh, gosh. and wanted to get her back and so oh, thought God. that the way to get this poor woman back Oh, was no. to get shredded and he literally showed up at her house without a shirt on and did one of oh, these no. like, eh? Right? Oh no! And like oh, that was it. No. Like, like he had nothing. He had nothing to say. He just showed no. up without his shirt on and like had abs with no. shorts and literally John... just like winked at her. And she was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, no. "Come on!" Oh, <laughs> no, no, no! I, I, can, I can tell you with one hundred percent honesty, I never <laughs> want to know who this person is because I've Don't already put this me. person. Yeah, I've yeah, already put like... this person in a box that I oh. cannot take them out of. Uh, based yes. on this story alone. So it could ruin some future certifications for me or anything like that. Like, I won't take it because <laughs> of it. Like, just don't tell me who it is. Because I might really need the knowledge. That's and terrible. I will not be able to swallow this story and oh, still pursue right. some type of process under the guise of this very well-known. Like, never tell me who this is. I never the idea, know. The idea, though, of, like, <laughs> this, people who are more uh, experienced in fitness know what it actually takes to to get right. shredded and like decide whether it's worth the trade off or not is a really interesting and it's not facet though <laughs> well it's it's almost it almost never is i mean i i do yeah. believe that uh, a, a very important. I mean, I wrote a list. I should find that list. I wrote a list of rules for living once. It's like there was like uh-huh. seventy-five rules for living. I did it on a very long flight. I don't know why, but I published it. It was a fun list. And one of them, you know, one of them was like, if you don't <laughs> understand fashion, train so hard that you look good in a crappy T-shirt. You know, right, right, and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> which is like a pretty good rule. Um, yeah. And it I, seems I mean, like solid. seems like reading a fashion blog would probably be easier, uh, regardless. Uh, one of the rules was get shredded once, take pictures, and never do it again. Never do it again. <laughs> and if you've ever been to a fitness conference and looked at what people actually look like, um, you right. will see that I am not the only person who follows that rule. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's, I do, so I do think that that's kind of neat. But, you know, it, there's a trade off, right, to understand about, uh, you know, for, for how hard I work, for how hard I train, and how I look, it mm-hmm. doesn't match up. But at right. the same time, I know that I don't eat well, and I'm not willing to change my eating habits, right. yeah, right. or measure my food. And I know that if I did those, I'll things, cheers to that. Right. <laughs> Kettle's, Kettle's got a, a, a 136 ounces of root beer. I don't, what, are, what are you drinking? It's my purple drink. Oh, that, that, it's like you know cup. what that is. That's I feel like Carolina just goes to the lab where you know they make you drink like radioactive markers for when you're doing a scan. <laughs> To like trace it throughout your body to look at what's going on. I feel like what you're drinking is that you literally paid Starbucks nine dollars for leftover radioactive drink. <laughs> oh, I got superpowers now. So, in all honesty, it, it was because somebody like in my DMs on Instagram, this is a true, totally true story. One of our listeners actually reached out and they were like, oh, Do you no. still get your purple drinks because you haven't mentioned them recently? And I'm like, my God, you are correct. Let me rectify the situation. Oh, <laughs> because who am I to let down our oh, listeners? Goodness. So here's my purple drink. Thank you for reminding me. Ordered that on Uber Eats from Starbucks, which means that that purple drink cost you about twenty-two dollars. <laughs> no, I did drive my ass to the drive-through, so thank you. You don't know me that well. You don't know me that well. I can hear the drive-through now. Don't act like, like you don't know me. <laughs> what, welcome to Starbucks. What would you like to have? Uh, give me the MRI special, please. Uh, 
<laughs> one, 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 one latte MRI coming up. Like, this is Miss Belmaris, isn't it? Yeah, it's me. Uh, we got we got you at the front window, Miss Belmaris. Uh, so if you want, if you need to get in any imaging uh, in any time within the next twenty four hours, Carol, you're, you're golden. Now's the time. Uh, yeah, go. It's time for you to go in the tube, bro. Um, so <laughs> fantastic. We're talking about something that I don't know about today. Uh, so I'm going to pass it to. I I know there was communication about uh, mistakes or so. I don't know what we're talking about. Um, well, which one did we choose? Which one did we choose, Amber? I actually, I'm going to take full credit for this. I suggested mm-hmm. a few topics today. Oh, did you? Uh, before yes, Amber even asked. I did. Oh, that's right. You sure did. It was the Total other day. Active. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ignored that. Uh, yeah, the message came you... before 9 a.m. So I was like, do I want to look? Because it's Right. It's way too early for topic discussions. 9 a.m. Like, nobody, is this one of those nobody's doing that John is going to make me cry today messages? <laughs> um. Okay, wait. To be fair, you have also made me cry happy tears. So it, it, it's been fairly it's, balanced. It's balanced. Right. Okay. That's, that's very <laughs> nice. I will give you credit. It's not always been bad. <laughs> Very nice of you to say. I'm trying to enforce boundaries. So, like, I took Uh, off Messenger off my phone, Slack off my phone, but I can't stop Facebook from telling me when you message. (laughs) So, like, (laughs) I need to check the computer. That's why I message you there. That's why I message you. No, it's because I don't have have Slack on my phone either. Um, Me neither. And so, yeah, no, and it's just... You know, I was at the gym this morning, and no big deal. And uh, and I was just thinking about the podcast. Um, oh my gosh, just flexing his delt. I mean, you're looking kind of flexy uh, in in your in your most recent. Right? Yeah, I mean, can you imagine? Jack, can you bro? imagine like, if I actually knew how to flex? Right, right. <laughs> I feel like I should learn how to flex. I legitimately have no idea how to flex. I know you're supposed to like. Not just do a make a muscle. What's it called when you make yeah. a muscle like a bicep pose? Flex. Like, I don't it's know called it's flexing. Called. You're yeah. supposed to like twist your wrist or something too. Yes, to, like... absolutely. Yeah. The the yeah. End, the the external rotation of of I think the uh, I can't remember. Really? I didn't know that. How do you? Yeah. When you when you twist oh, you... it flexes the bicep. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Keto. Oh, Keto's got the guns out. I oh, see. Snap. Oh, I snap. didn't know this. Okay, that's... I can see the muscle. Okay, good, good. That's, Perfect. That's impressive. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna that's my flex Friday. Because the bicep, yeah. I mean, the, the bicep obviously flexes, but it also rotates, right? Yeah, it rotates. Ooh, it, just makes sense. It, um, it controls internal and external rotation of the forearm. I can't remember the technical term for the forearm. The perfect. Carpool, maybe. Uh, but the not only that, Jonathan, just, if you, yeah. You just, that is definitely not right. No, that's what it is. It's the carpal. That's where the tunnel is. Um, <laughs> that's how you get the syndrome. Uh, everybody knows that, Jonathan. Uh, you know the tunnel is that? Not not only if you could flex, Jonathan, but if you weren't on a steady diet of waffles, burritos, and churros, uh, that would also <laughs> increase your 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 oh, aesthetics, yo, my... bro. Aesthetics, bro. It Steady, would actually bro. be interesting because I I have put on a fair amount of muscle. I mean, I've been working out since we got here in Mexico, which is about four and a half Jack. months. I mean, I've been doing Jack, five bro. six days a week of of hypertrophy programming. So like I've put on a fair bit of muscle. It yeah. would be interesting if I were to diet for a few weeks just to see what I mean, I'm not Still going to obviously, it. but like <laughs> it'd be interesting to see what I would so, look like, but I mean, it's not going to happen. Um, so anyway, so. To Mexico to go on a diet. No right, one, right. <laughs> no, no one. one. <laughs> said no one, I'm going to Mexico to diet down, said no one ever. I do, there it's actually like- was, there were a couple of the broiest bros to have ever broed that oh, lived in a complex at one point. These dudes were bros. And uh, one of them actually used the line, abs taste better than cookies. <laughs> what? So oh, my God. What an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he needs to tell himself to sleep yeah. at night, like, yeah. it's dude, right. Like, no. Do what you got to do, bro. Like, nothing no. tastes better than cookies. They're freaking cookies. No. Um so, so what what are we talking about today? Yeah, what we is got, the topic? I think minutes. it's assessments. Got, assessments, right? Yeah, is it, is assessments? All right. I, 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 got, I got nothing to say here about assessments. Uh, you know, I do have something to say. I used to do yes. assessments online. I used, uh-huh. I used to, I used to have, now I don't do this at all anymore. I haven't done it for the last four years, but there was a point when I would have clients send me an overhead squat assessment via video uh, from a from the front position side back, uh, you know, um, and I would assess things like knee valgus and uh, you know lower back arch and things like that. Well, that quickly faded as I realized that pretty much everybody that I work with, number one, didn't need an assessment because they were mm-hmm. basically getting off the couch. 
Uh, and number yeah. two, wasn't really that helpful for them. Like it, I could just program similar stuff because I'm working with a template because I'm working with one specific group of people. It wasn't right. much to assess the sort of, so the assessment played it out, played itself out in the lifestyle that this very nuanced group of people live. You know, they sit all day, they barely mm -hmm. exercise and they eat whatever they want fundamentally. So I don't do it anymore. And I, I remember your sort of assessment of assessments, John. Uh, I won't speak for you, but uh, I think I think it was spelled C-R-A-P is how you described it. Uh, and that wasn't an acronym, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you jump in or Carol. I got nothing to say. I'm just going to scroll Instagram for a minute or two. You guys take, tell them what you said. Jonathan, take it away. Yeah, do Am stuff, Jonathan. Yeah, do stuff, do, do, stuff. do stuff. Yeah. Uh, where do I start with this one? Um, no assessments are not crap. They can be useful. Um, that's no, what C R A P stands for, by the way. For <laughs> Assessments can be useful put, for anybody who was trying to put those two together. Um, uh, C R A P. Yeah, I, I don't think that they're crap. I think that they can be useful. Um, I feel like as trainers get more experience, they generally do less assessments. That's just mm -hmm. a general trend that I've seen. Um, I think it's the type of thing that beginner trainers, particularly inexperienced trainers, feel like they should do and perhaps over-assess and come to um, improper conclusions uh, based off of assessments. The reality of it is you really don't know what's going on um, and you can pretend like you do. And I mean, this is like, right. <laughs> this is um, from experience working with a lot of trainers, but this is also from my own experience. I mean, the crap that I used to tell clients that was wrong with there them. There we go. I mean, I don't know if your shoulder's actually impinged. I don't know if you've got a <laughs> less space in your acetabulum, you know? Like, I don't know if your glutes are firing or not. Like, I don't know any of that shit. They're not. But I used to say it. Um, <laughs> and, and I did believe that I knew that it that those things were happening. And then, like anything else, as I understood more, I realized that I knew less. And Dunning so, Dunning Kruger, I was at the top of Mount Stupid. And so, I, you know, that's part of the journey, and there's nothing to feel bad about that. Um, it happens. Like, that's just so. It, so, I think, you know, to me, the goal of any kind of assessment is basically to just make sure you don't hurt the person. Um, yeah. The majority of us that are, that are working with general population, like, your goal is to um, keep the person moving without pain. That's primary goal, mm -hmm. right? Secondary is to get them whatever results that they want, which you may not even know when you start. They may not be even be able to verbalize what they actually want, why they're actually there before you start. But it's right. to kind of worry about figuring that out. But the first step is to do it without pain. And so um, it's – I don't think that there's anything wrong with like a basic assessment, basically like sit down, stand up, like move around a little bit, like what hurts, what doesn't hurt. Um, and if there is pain, maybe you could try to program around it, but like that's, you probably got to refer out, um, mm -hmm. locally. Right. So when it comes to online training, um, I look at assessments. This is what we teach in the online trainer Academy, which when you got your piece of paper, you want to do the ad? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got a yeah, piece of that, paper right here. It's funny you should mention that Jonathan, because coach, you can coach clients online responsibly and profitably with the Online Trainer Academy Level 1 Certification uh, Program. We'd like to send you on over to onlinetrainer.com slash OTA so you can start your online journey today. Mm. Back to you, Good. Jonathan. Thank you, Ronald. <laughs> so when we, talk about, when we talk about the Online Trainer Academy and, and yeah. coaching people responsibly online, what does that mean? Um, I mean, it, it, means a, it means a lot, but one of the cases – here is, you know, as we're talking about assessments, is to understand that in a gym, you are trying to at least pretending like um, you're pretending that whatever you're saying is true, right? Mm -hmm. It probably mm -hmm. isn't. You probably <laughs> aren't actually doing an accurate assessment. Um, when you're assessing people online, you basically have to throw that out the window. You have to favor reliability in assessments. 
Um, assessments are really good online to track progress. And when you're choosing what assessments you're using, you choose, you, you favor reliability over validity, basically is the easiest way to think about it. So, you know, the, if you're trying to check a client's body fat, for example, the most valid assessment that you can do is a DEXA machine. Well, the odds that a client's going to have access to a DEXA machine on an ongoing basis are pretty slim. Okay, so, then you can go for a bod pod or underwater wing. They're super accurate. Okay, again, the odds that a client's going to have access to a, de to a <laughs> bod pod or an underwater you know, weighing machine is really, really slim. So most gyms um, use, use the... the uh, and hell. Not calipers. calipers. Yeah. No, not oh, calipers. Not calipers. Okay. Not calipers. Yeah. Most gyms use, thank you. Bioelectrical impedance. Well, bioelectrical mm. impedance is such an unbelievably flawed science <laughs> that you can basically just throw that out the window. Like, like it's not even worth it as recycling. Like that just goes straight in the trash. It is so, <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the quality of the machine. There's not a better machine or a worse machine. The problem is the science is just flawed. Right, because it has to do with resistance of of the electrical signal going throughout the body, which has a lot to do with how much water is in the body, water, which is impacted yeah. by everything from rest to hydration to stress levels, which means that there's going to be a three to five percent difference, regardless of <laughs> whatever you can do, yeah. which, which you really can't control for in any meaningful way. Um, so, so that's garbage. Um, calipers are fine, but to do an accurate caliper assessment, you've got to have a practitioner who's well practiced. I mean, it's estimated that they have to do five to 10,000 caliper tests before they can do it accurately and consistently. Mm -hmm. So again, not good. And, and your in-comb clients are certainly not going to be able to do this. So those like body fat scales, they're useless. Um, so what fat loss do you do? Well, the simplest thing ever, a tape measure. It is really easy to coach a client or to coach a, a spouse or whoever of a client to do a tape measure assessment. It's really easy to find the marks, you know, your, your ASIS on your hip to, to do it around your belly button. Like it's really easy to find um, those marks in your body to be able to do. And a tape measure is a tape measure. It's a tape measure. Amber, I think you send one to your clients when they start, right? Like it costs a buck. It's super cheap. They're all just as accurate as all the other ones. And it's a reliable assessment. And you can plug, if they really want body fat, I mean, you can plug tape measure into calculators and find body fat, but the reality of it is, you can measure inches, right? Super, super, super reliable. Um, when it comes to performance tests, things like one mile run, things like 12 mm -hmm. minute runs are really, really good for cardiovascular tests. So you could do like a, like a 12 minute bike or whatever it is. I actually really, really like, um, like old school gym class tests for online training, like 60 second push up, 60 second crunch. Like clearly they're not actually measuring strength or anything like that, but it's a quantifiable metric that a client will get better at as mm -hmm. they get into better shape. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, a lot of trainers try to do like FMS type stuff remotely. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Um, I question it. The inter, the inter-rater reliability, the FMS is pretty good if you have a practitioner there who's well-trained, but if you're doing it remotely, I don't know if there's ever been any studies about it. It's less good. Um, and you could do, I mean, you could do flexibility tests and stuff like that, but the point is you really do have to favor reliability over validity. You have to admit that whatever you do is not going to be valid versus, you know, a tape measure, which, and so you can't really rely upon that. Um, so you've got to make sure that the client stays safe and you've got to find some stuff to, to mark progress on. I mean, that's kind of it. You don't need to, feel like you put yourself on this high pedestal to make up stuff for a client just because that's, you know, quote unquote, your job. Uh, Cause it's not. So, so I got a question for, uh, for our in the field correspondent, uh, Catalina Belmonte. She's, she's 12 ounces into an MRI drink. 
Uh, she's probably, <laughs> probably ready, probably ready to answer questions. Fully hydrated, her brain's properly marked. All intravenous channels are highlighted for MRI magnetic readiness in, imaging right now. Uh, Keto, do you assess the clients at all? Like, do you, are there things that you look at when they're going through the program to see what the what the markers are for success? Like, do you do any inches measurements or any photos or anything like that? Here? the dress a dress fitting or like do you do any of that stuff or you're just like yeah we feel good uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're done here. so what's, what's your thoughts so in the question of do i assess clients like in the beginning of of a program uh speaking of like uh, assessing a squat assessing a, a push-up and stuff like that i do not Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I instead, I just go through the basics of form for each exercise that we're doing, because I, I assume that every single one of my clients are beginners, because most of them are. And mm -hmm. even the ones who have been working out for longer could always use a refresher and proper form. Right. So that's just like across the board. I just do it for everybody. Everybody goes through the same kind of like uh, basics of, of proper form and all this kind of stuff. I give them the pointers of what to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always like, if you feel any pain, if you have it, you know, anything that is other than, you know, your muscles being sore from working, mm -hmm. then I need to know because you probably need to see somebody who's versed on that. That's right. out of my scope of practice. Right. And so that's on assessments. I don't assess because much like you guys, like I figure out, it's like, it's, there's no, there's no real point really. Like it doesn't really help. And it's just a waste of time. And I found that for me, when I was a newbie trainer, I felt like I had to go through those assessments because it was a way that I was justifying my expertise. Right. And that's bull crap. Like, it's not true. That doesn't automatically qualify you as a better trainer or a worse trainer or anything. It just basically speaks to our own insecurity that you have this this need to show that you know what you're doing. It's like, just let it go. It's fine. You do know what you're doing. Just take yeah. them through the process that's going to benefit them, right? Um, so there's that. And as for the other stuff, like measuring and all that, yes, we do. And I love it because I find that for each of my clients who are all women, mm -hmm. they each will find the level of progress measuring that they are comfortable with and that helps them thrive. Not everybody loves the scale and you as a trainer need to let go of the scale if it's not working for your client. If it's traumatizing, if it brings them down, if they call themselves names in their head because the number on the scale went up, it's not freaking worth it. And you need to recognize that and put it to rest and say like, you know what, put the scale away because we don't need that. We're going to focus on energy levels, how well you're sleeping, what your hunger cues or your... Um, uh, like your desire for food, like the snacky foods that you like, how is that changing? Like so many other, uh, you know, flags of progress and improvement that you can find. So yeah, my women tend to love measuring, like the measuring tape and clothes specifically, because I don't know, we love fashion, we love looking good. And so it's always like this dress has been a little bit tight. And then suddenly, oh, now it's, it's fitting better. And that's super encouraging because it's a very real world uh transfer of right. the skills and the progress that you're making it's actually having an impact in, in their lives because now their clothes feel more comfortable and they look better i, I gotta say that's one of my favorites uh yeah. as a coach that works with moms i found that i'll have clients that will not trust the numbers of the measurement but if they put on that pair of pants mm -hmm. instantly they are satisfied with what's happened. Um, I yeah. could I could talk to so Ambluna, you know, oh, you're three inches down in the waist. Oh, my gosh, you're four and a half inches down in the waist. Ah, I don't see it. And then, and then invariably, sort of sort of without fail, at some point yeah. I'll get a message. Oh, my God, Ren, I put on my jeans that I haven't worn since last summer, and I can't believe they fit. This is a man. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I was telling you with the four <laughs> inches. Lost. But, yeah. But like you said, <laughs> that's such a real world application. There, there's a point. There's a point to the conversation, Jonathan. Like if you could assess through more real, real world application that ties into your demographic, if you're working with construction workers and they say, man, I was able to drive that nail for all eight hours and usually it's six hours, I'm not, I'm not able to put the wood up anymore you know, on, on when, I'm, when I'm building the, the frame for the house. 
Man, that's amazing. Or if you will example, well, it was fairly <laughs> sexual. It, it was not only sexual, but it was sexist. Uh, there was there was a tad of in your window. Yeah, was that yeah. a yeah. <laughs> Nail, nailing the hammer? Uh, the <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah, was good. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Don. It was that, good. It was good. It was, I need to it was, ring. It was a bit too much in your window. You're probably right. <laughs> um, you know, well, you're but on. but you know, if you could if you could tie your assessment to something that's real world applicable to the to the demographic that you're working with and assess that way, man, you're going to get some clients. What's the thing called, Jonathan, I always forget. Uh, you say that it's not a win, but they need a something within usually the first two weeks. Uh, win's not the word. Aha moment. Yeah, but there's some. Because I no idea what you were talking about. Yeah, there's some particular thing that you cite that we talk about in the old online trainer in it's the academy. Awesome. Is yes, that's what it is? Okay. But they need that aha moment early. That's a great way to get to it, to, to tie an assessment to something that they do every day. Or like yeah, Keto said, like that, that pair of pants or something like that. Like, put, about base this. your assessments around your demographic. Go ahead, Jonathan. What do, you, what do you assess people for? There's two reasons why you assess people. To keep them safe, safe to measure progress. Mm-hmm. That's it? Maybe, 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 maybe those are tertiary reason which I would say is lower priority, but is to optimize their training, their program. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I would, the reason why I say that's tertiary is I would argue and feel fairly confident arguing that the majority of trainers just simply aren't good enough to be able to do that well anyway. So right. not to say it isn't like important, but it's just, I, I mean, it's, it's unbelievably complicated um, and, and masterful when you, when you see it done. So, so if you agree with that, all you're, all you're trying to do with your assessment, and, and this is something that carries over to everything we're doing, which is a first principles approach, which is ignore all of the stuff you've ever heard. As you become more of an expert, you start to be able to break down things into their core components mm-hmm. because you understand the problem so much more. So right. every single time that you have a client, right? The, the, the core components of it, the first principles of it is you need a way to measure progress and, and, and make sure that they understand and they're getting motivated and excited about the progress they're making on an ongoing basis, right? And you need to keep them safe. So what does that mean? And that's, I mean, I, it, it is different for everybody. I like your guys' example where you're actually using like a real world assessment. It's not something that you're commonly taught. It's not something that you're taught by NASM or NSCA or whatever it is, they're never going to be like, well, actually, the best kind of assessment is less technically <laughs> accurate, but the best kind of assessment is to have the client pick a pair of jeans or a dress and, you know, that's their measure. That's their mark. Like, you're never going to read that, which is mm-hmm. why all of those certifications are so ass backwards in how they <laughs> act because they pretend like we're not dealing with humans. Right. Yep. Yeah. And Gosh. so once you become more of an expert, you start to realize those things. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's really, really powerful. So I I suggest anybody listening to this, if you got through all of the nonsense for the first 45 minutes that you actually still listening <laughs> to, to really think about, OK, if my only goals with an assessment are to figure out a way to measure progress, that's going to keep client motivated on an ongoing basis and to keep them safe. What do you need to do? Right. Mm-hmm. This is not a, I need to impress my peers because your peers don't care what you do. Right. Mm-hmm. What do you need to do that's best for your clients? Right. And it's, it might be different for each client. Mm-hmm. And Ren, also because you were asking about different measures of progress and all this uh, stuff. So what happens with my programs is that after the weeks that we have together, in which you might recall, I get up at ridiculous o'clock like 5 45 every morning to do the workouts live with them and then that video is recorded and it stays in our group forever and they have like lifetime access to it they can always go back and revisit and everything so now uh, a couple of days ago one of my clients who finished one of my programs says yeah like i've kept going with the with the workouts because i just feel so great when i'm working out this way and she's like, and I remember when I first started working out with you, uh, we would do, you know, this, uh, we had like a mini kind of like a uh, quick set of 15 uh, jump squats that mm-hmm. it was just like to, you know, get cardio going and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, and I would struggle to even get 10. 
And that was always like a point of frustration. She's like, and now I'm at the point that I'm racing you on the 15 squats <laughs> because I am completing them and I'm actually racing you and trying to go faster and harder and lower and jumping higher than you on the video. And I'm like, oh my God, like that's an amazing kind of like point of, of progress for her. So that's very motivating. So what kind of points of progress like that can your clients discover for themselves? Because they are also going to find them and it's just your job to keep encouraging that. That's, a, that's phenomenal, first of all, and as phenomenal as Jonathan saying that humans matter. Uh, you know, it's just shocking to hear on this podcast episode. <laughs> it's like, you know, pe- people matter. That's the very nice of you, Jonathan. We've been we've been waiting for this breakthrough for 90 some odd episodes. Uh, <laughs> 97. <laughs> for you to con- connect to humanity. And I told Amber it would work. <laughs> some people matter. <laughs> yeah. some. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, all, always, a, always a pleasure appearing always on this. Always need to get my, uh, uh, my two cents. Guys, yeah. I feel like that went pretty well. It was, it it was better, better it, than it was better out. than I thought. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm very I proud. Had very, very, very low expectations for this episode. Nice, Keto. <laughs> Keto bust out the popsicle stick emoji. Uh, thank you very uh, much. <laughs> Solidified the episode. Uh, so. <laughs> You know, we got haircuts, delts, and purple drink here on the show. It couldn't have gone wrong. Uh, no no wonder it went so right. I'm wearing a hat and a do-rag because I'm thugged out, baby. Baby. Yeah, uh, yo, yeah I, got, I got the do-rag. The, Love uh, it. The, the, the oh, yeah. uh, oh, my so goodness. Getting, getting back that, to my what, roots. Is that like... This so here's here's probably the probably really racially insensitive, and I probably that's all right. Oh, God. What is that? <laughs> Don't. No, I'm, I'm why, why change now, Jonathan? Yeah, right. No, I'm curious. Why, why, why wear it? Like, is it is it a cultural thing? Is it, there, is it yes? To keep your hair in place. There's there's multiple methodologies here. So okay. in my case, I wash I wash my entire body today. Like I I legitimately. Oh, and Amber, was that time I, of the yeah, month? Yeah, right, right. And Amber and I discussed this. You know, I you know I did I don't like to cherry pick when I when I bathe. So I I did head to toe. Um. So when I wash I'm my hair, know I know why that I I that. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish, but yeah, just move past it, Jonathan. Let it, <laughs> let, let, let this, let this one go, sir. Um, that should so... not be seen that bears special mention. I'm just right. gonna leave that. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, I think, I think in these COVID times, it's important to say that, you know, because it, there are, there are people, you know, you can't spot reduce, but apparently you can spot wash. I've seen it. Uh, so <laughs> in any case, uh, so if you don't poo, you don't wash your butt. Yeah, right. See, that's not a good. I don't want to ever hear that again. First of all, uh, it's a horrible, it's a horrible life rule. Uh, oh. So, well, when I wash my hair, I will brush it while it's wet, and I'll put the do rag on. And if you've ever seen black guys with the waves in their hair, for me, time. my my yeah, my hair is naturally it's got a curl pattern to it. So when I mm-hmm. do that, then I'll have the waves, and it looks really really sophisticated. Nice. Uh, now the other. The other thing for do rag is cultural. Uh, it's it's almost it's almost a uniform of some you know some neighborhoods some s- some areas in the community. It's just what they wear. Mm-hmm. Sort of it's it's mm-hmm. it's what the Birkenstock is to the Hamptons, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> if I if I were to go into that community, you're saying I should put on a do rag? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I would say no. that you probably first should not go into the community. Secondarily, <laughs> should you find yourself there, immediately remove the do, said do rag uh, in, in an effort yes. to maybe pu- push off yourself as an insurance man or something of that nature that would allow you to be able to exit the community uh, without without the threat of bodily harm. Um, but some people wear it out. I do not wear a do rag in public. Uh, it's not an in public uh, choice for me. Uh, I think it's I think it's a little bit too ratchet for me, Jonathan. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> what is ratchet? I love that word. Rat, rat, let, me ratchet, look up, let me look up ratchet yeah, on go, the slang go website. To the, <laughs> go to the slang <laughs> website immediately. Uh, I investigate mean, ratchet. we were doing so well on this episode, and then Jonathan starts with this question thing. Yeah, yeah, ever is in a year. <laughs> it's like a dive. We, <laughs> we had a, we, Did you? We had a good run, Keto. Ratchet. We, Ratchet oh, is a go. slang term in hip hop that, in its general sense, referred to an uncouth woman and maybe a Louisianian <laughs> regiolect. I don't know what that means of the word wretched or a variation of the word ratchet. 
Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. what they mean by that Louisiana uh, re- regional dialect, uh, mm-hmm. instead of saying rich because of the accent, rich, rich mm-hmm. uh, so can be it, loosely in, described. To use it ratchet. in a sentence, uh, oh, to use Jesus. it in a sentence, <laughs> old girl with her hoochie ass clothes too tight <laughs> and her track shown in her scraggly ass weave with her fake ass oh Gucci God. bag <laughs> thinks she's cute. She ratchet. Oh man, this is the most descriptive sentence I've ever heard <laughs> on a live broadcast of any kind. Uh, so, uh, starting in just eighty-seven dollars a month for twelve months, the Online Trader Academy is the smartest career investment you could ever make. Join today, uh, OnlineTrader.com/OTA. This has been a thrilling, a riveting episode of the Online Trainer Show. Uh, we're going to cut this thing short for uh, multiple reasons. Uh, you can get the show notes, but hopefully the not the last the way, five minutes. Composed by the author of that sentence is Big Booty D, and okay. they and Love they it. wrote that on April twenty seventh, two thousand and fourteen. Well, that, that just makes sense. It was out of context without the author. Uh, now it makes sense. Uh, thank you for that. So, so here's just... here's what we should do. This is a new skit. People need to send me words that have. <laughs> John so all your th- on Urban Dictionary yes. to read. You learn the new word every episode. Send in all your <laughs> slang terminology. Uh, we're, we're not going to. We're not. We're not only going to educate the public here. We're going to educate John Jonathan Goodman. Uh, he's going to be bilingual uh, by the time this is over. You'll be able to speak the well, King's I mean, English that's, and Ratchet. That's why I brought. That's why I, brought I don't understand. Like man and Latina woman onto the podcast with me. It was too much. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know. I still don't get it, Red, because for all that he travels, he's still lacking on the culture. I don't I, know. I know. Like, it, there's it something. Just, <laughs> it, it never sinks in for some reason. Like, he's there, <laughs> but he's a, he's a bit of a, a marble in a, in a glass full of ice, isn't he? You know, like, he just never, never <laughs> when it melts, you still see the marble, right? It, it never really blends in. Uh, see, the, how they are uh, so good at <laughs> metaphors. I don't know. I don't know. Right yeah, off did, the did top you, of his head. How? That? Like, have you ever used that before? Or is that new? No, I just made that up as I was talking. You just made that, that up. That is ridiculous. Like, yeah. That's like, so oh, good. I need, I need to think of something that doesn't <laughs> sink in to something else. Okay, a glass of ice. Why not? Okay, what doesn't go into a glass of ice? A mobile? Like, <laughs> that's well, a it, talent. It made sense to me. Um, it makes show no notes. No, it's, it's, it it's makes fantastic. really good sense. You're actually really great at it. it. It's a sensible it's argument. Uh, you know, I hit and I miss sometimes. Like, it's not always good, but it's always there. <laughs> um, so, sort, of, sort of like the fried chicken on a buffet. It's not always good, but it's always there. Uh, <laughs> on, uh, I'm, yes, I made that up on the spot. Uh, show notes can be found at onlinetrainer.com slash podcast. You're welcome, planet. Amber, did you have something you needed to add? Yeah, Amber, do you want to say something you want to talk to us about how well we did today? <laughs> but, but I may send a uh, potentially inappropriate video to you guys later based off of this recent conversation. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll teach John no, another, no. another word through this, uh, through this video. That's all uh, I need. Okay. Yeah, That's all I need in life. Perfect. You don't know if there's vodka in there. Maybe that's how I survived this episode. We don't know. You'll never know. Catalina is drinking so diligently right now. Oh my gosh. It looks so enjoyable. I want, Carolina, I want when you have to go to pee, which is going to be soon, and it's going to be a big one. I want you to turn off the lights and make it pitch black in the room. Because there is no way that your urine is not going to be glow in the dark after drinking that. I'm going to be so excited if it is. Oh my gosh. Oh man, it's a fiesta in the toilet for Catalina. Um, I don't even know. I'm just going to. Did I upload yet? I need to leave. I've seen, I've seen too much today. I've seen too much. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the Online Trainer Show. We shouldn't have a podcast.